name is Ron Koop. I'm customer service technician here at ESU. Today we're going to start our video series covering our ESU ECOS command station, part number 50200. This will just be a guided overview of the ECOS system, not an in-depth tour. We'll get into that on future videos. So for right now I want to show you what the system can do, what the, menu, what the menus are, and basically how to get your trains running as quickly as possible. So, without further ado, let's get started. The ESU ECOS command station is a multiple protocol system capable of running not only DCC, but Motorola, Selectrix, and M4 as well. Along with your ECOS command station, you will receive a 5 amp, 15 to 21 volt variable power supply. If you find yourself needing more power in the future, ESU offers both 4 amp and 8 amp boosters. The ECOS comes with a 7 inch high resolution touch screen display. It also has two integrated throttles, able to access 9 of the functions for each throttle through the button scene. Also you can access a total of 28 functions per throttle by using the touch screen. The joysticks on each throttle allow you to use the playable air horn or whistle. It will also allow you to scroll down through menus, uh, select menu items, and by pressing left and right you can reverse direction. The ECOS allows you to design your track plan right on the display. By using our Switch Pilot stationary decoders, the ECOS can control up to 1,420 switches. By using our detector stationary decoders, you can see on your track diagram which blocks are actually occupied. If the locomotive is equipped with one of our decoders that features Railcom, your ECOS can even display which loco is in which block. Routes can be triggered by feedback on the touchscreen. Shuttle trains can be set up to automatically shuttle between two points with intermediate stops en route. Each ECOS comes with an RJ45 network port so you can update its software or use a computer for operation. And just a brief overview before we plug it in and get all started here. Here are your two nice large command station throttles, one on each side. This button here allows you to actually select your locomotive. This is the rocker stick or joystick which allows you to um, use the playable air horn if the file that you're using uh, in your locomotives allow it. Uh, not all files do, by the way. Um, if you press it left or right, you can change direction. Uh, that is actually programmable in the system. Uh, you can also change directions by turning your throttle all the way to the left until it clicks, and that will automatically change direction. You do it again it'll change to the other direction. The go button starts the system. The stop button uh, obviously stops the system and if you hold it down will shut the entire system down it will come up and say it's okay to unplug. Here are your function buttons, nine in total for each throttle. Although like I said earlier when we actually start up the system you will see you can access up to 28 different functions using the touch screen. On the back of the ECOS you have your power supply input, you have your power for your programming track, your power for the main layout, you also have some connections here to use our switch pilots or detectors you can plug right in and it has an RJ45 network jack that you can plug in a either a computer or you can plug this into a wireless router or just a regular router uh, that way you can get your firmware updates and you can also if you hook up the wireless router use your cell phones or our brand new mobile command to wireless throttles your ECOS comes with a 5 amp, 15 to 21 variable volt power supply. You can adjust the voltage right here on this little knob. Just use a flathead screwdriver. Turn it to the left if you want to decrease the voltage. Turn it to the right to increase the voltage. 
Again, if you go up to the highest voltage possible, which is 21 volts, your amperage will decrease a little bit. Um, otherwise, if you're running HO scale, normally 15, 16 volt is plenty, and you're running at 5 amps. So now let's get our Eco set up. First of all, I'm going to just put some of our handy Kato Unitrack here, just as a little test. And just two wires going to the track. Now the command station itself, we'll go ahead and get the power supply here. And we'll plug that into the back of the Ecos. Plug your power supply into the wall. And your command station will start to power up. Now, why that's powering up, let's go ahead and connect the track to the Ecos. These handy dandy little uh, <clears throat> terminal screws, joiners, uh, make it very easy to wire your track up to the Ecos, whether it's the programming track or your main track. All we gotta do is make sure the screws are loosened here. Okay, that'll, that'll open up the holes here. And then we'll just insert our two wires, one to each rail, tighten down the screws. Give them a little tug, just make sure they don't come out. And if I look at the back of the Ecos one more time, You can see down here, it actually says programming track or main track. We're going to plug this into the main track, just like that. That's all there is to it. And we're all set to ready to test everything. Okay, let's start our tour of the Ecos menu system. The first thing you'll notice when you power on the system, you have your throttle tab, your accessories tab, your layout tab, and your setup tab. We'll go over each one of these and what they do, but not, not in too much detail, just a basic overview. We will have a separate video on each one of these tabs. They are very in-depth and there's so much you can do with this system. In, in a basic introduction video, um, it's just too much to cover. So I don't want to overwhelm you guys at first. But let's go over the basics. You got your Ecos hooked up. I got my locomotive on the track here. And how do I start it? Well. You can do one of two things. Here on your screen, there's a select button, or this is also a locomotive select button. It's got a picture of a little steam engine on the side here. You can press either one of those. And by the way, the stylus that I am holding comes with the Ecos. You can use your fingers, but the stylus makes it nice because you don't get your screen all smudged up. Okay. If you already have your engine programmed, uh, it will show up in the list here. But let's say I don't have my engine programmed, but I know what the address of that locomotive is. So I'm going to just type in here 2307 and then hit the checkbox at the bottom. You can see that brings up the actual throttle screen. Uh, this locomotive is set up for 28 speed steps. Up here at the top, you can change direction just by tapping those icons. You can also change directions just by turning the throttle to the uh, off position, and you'll hear it click, and it will change directions for you there as well. Okay, if I want to start the locomotive, I just simply either turn the throttle here, And I can stop and change directions. 
or I can actually tap where I want the speed on the touchscreen display. Now, as you can see over here, you have your function buttons. You can access more functions by pressing F, and it says 17 plus. That's because you can only show 17 different functions at a time here. And that'll give you access up to 28 different function buttons. And you can just press that again and toggle back. Now, these icons are part of our ESU uh, low sound decoders. If you have another locomotive that has a different manufacturer decoder in it, say a TCS or Soundtrax um, or Digitrax, um, everything will work the same. The only difference is you won't see these particular icons. For example, here you have a bell icon or a horn icon or a coupler icon. Those are programmed into our actual deco decoders. They wouldn't be programmed into another manufacturer's decoder, but you can still access those function buttons just by tapping. Uh, let me give you an example here. Uh, I want to start up the sound. So I'm going to hit function button 8. Two ways I can do it. I can either tap or I can actually press the button. On our ESU decoders, it'll go through the startup sequence. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut that down a little loud. You can activate the bell just by pressing the bell button. You can activate the horn just by tapping. Or you can use the rocker switch here. Which makes it a little more playable. If you're done using that locomotive and you want to use another one, you can hit the select button, just choose your new number, hit the checkbox. If you're completely done with that and you want to clear this out, you can hit the little icon here with the uh, wrench and tell it to release controller. Now you can see here we also have a lot of different options. Uh, new loco, new consys, shuttle train, edit loco, etc. We'll cover that in a separate video. It's pretty in-depth when you get into edit loco and um, setting up a shuttle train. So we're just going to hit release controller and there you go. I'm going to zoom in here a bit for the next part so you can see the uh, display a little better. Again, it's a 7-inch high definition touchscreen display which is very nice. It's not just using knobs or CVs, everything is visual. So it's pretty easy to actually, if you're new to the system, to figure out how things work. First thing we covered there was the throttle tab. Next thing we're gonna cover is the accessories tab. And the accessory tab allows you to actually set up switches, signals, uh, routes, and they're all accessible through here. You can have uh, 15 different pages and also uh, there's five different banks down here and 15 pages per bank. Uh, just to give you a quick sample if I hit the wrench down here I get these other icons and say I want to set up a switch I just hit the little switch button here gives me all my slots that are available I just pick one that I want and I can define here what my new accessory is. I can give it a name, I can give it a duration as far as how long to activate, I can give it the address, and I can also give it an icon. So just very quickly, let's just say this is a left turnout. We won't worry about anything else, but let's just say it's a left turnout. And there it shows up in my new accessory box. I'll hit the wrench again and as you do this all of your accessories, your signals, um, your routes will show up here for easy access. You can simply just click on that and it throws your switch. 
again, you have to wire it, wire it properly um, to either a, some type of switch activating mechanism like our switch pilot systems. Uh, then you can set it up here in the ECOS and you can control your switches just by tapping. Okay, the next button that we are tab that we have up here is our layout tab. The nice thing with this is you can actually define your layout on here. And then you can actually activate the switches on your layout either from the accessories tab like we just did or which makes it a lot easier from the actual from the actual track plan. Again, we'll get into this in more detail, but you can have a very complicated layout on here. If you have a large layout, you actually have multiple control boards. Control board just being a single screen. But you can get up to 16 control boards. Basically, it's like a dispatcher control panel. Um, you can automate things with this, all kind of, it, it's just amazing all the different things that you can do. We'll get into that on, on another video. Okay, and lastly here we have our setup menu. This definitely will take a whole video just to explain this one menu. There's a lot in here. Um, you can restore your ECOS back to your factory settings, uh, restart the ECOS, uh, you can set your internal booster cutoff, there are uh, settings in here for using uh, DHCP to get a IP address uh, if you have a wireless router hooked up to this or just a router in general. Uh, I have nothing hooked up at the moment, but this is where you would do that. You also have the second setup tab uh, allows you to set up of locomotives and protocols. You can program your locomotives from here if need be with your CV values. Um, very easily you would just say I want to program on the main track or program on the programming track. Type in your engine number here. And you can actually read CV values. So say I want to read CV 19 which is your consisting it should come up and read zero. And you can see right here, CV19 value is zero. If I want to write something to that, I just simply come in here, type the value I want, and press write. And we'll get into that in more detail. Uh, tab three in the setup menu. This tells you what hardware version you have. So it's a 2.0 ECOS. The software version is 4.1.0. You can hook this up to your home computer network and download the latest firmware for it uh, as new, uh, new features become available. It gives you the serial number of your ECOS. You'll need that to go on to our website and register your ECOS. It tells you what your internal booster cutoff is, which we set up in the other page. And that's pretty much it on that particular tab. So I'm just going to hit the check button here. When I'm ready to shut everything down on my ECOS, all I need to do is press the stop button, hold it down. It'll say shutting down and it'll tell you when you can unplug your ECOS. And that's an overview of our ESU ECOS command station. Again, the part number is 50200. Very nice system, probably the only system that you would ever need with multiple ways of upgrading as your empire grows. You can add extra boosters, switch pilots, detectors, and even our handheld throttles. If you have any questions uh, and for contact information, please look at our website, which is www.loksound.com. For current pricing and availability, please contact your nearest dealer. My name is Ron Koof, Customer Service Technician here at ESU, and I want to thank you for spending some time with us.